So this late game assault from the Canadians attacking the Japanese mainland is incredible. I would have never guessed that something like this would break out so late in the campaign. So we're about five turns from the original end date that we had planned for this series, and uh, we'll see how much longer we go. We still have two major conflicts. Um, one, obviously, like I said in the intro, in the Japanese mainland. Uh, the other in the middle of Africa. And actually the Congo seem to... They're, I think they're winning this war now. With the way that they have their army set up, it's, it's pretty smart. They have their uh, rocket artillery in the back, and uh, they're launching their attack. I mean, the bazookas probably shouldn't be on the front lines, but still. Uh, it does seem like that they're kind of maybe running out of infantry units, which isn't good. Uh, they also have a few helicopter units, which, which is probably okay. But uh, I think the Ashanti have to be on the verge of, of collapse here. Uh, also, nice little naval conflict going off the coast of uh, Western Africa. UK have done a pretty good job so far attacking Cuba. And that is it's that is it. Um, but if something, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I think it's safe to say that we're gonna need to see another conflict happen within this video or the next one, or else I, I might have to end this um, because I mean it really depends. Uh, again, it depends. Like I said, it's gonna have to be like ten turns without like a major conflict. Um, but I think that we would have it, it. We'd have to see something else go down. Uh, so, anyways, Canada took over Tokyo. And they're going after Satsuma and uh, Kyoto. And here comes their turn right now, actually. For some reason, wait a second, are the Australians and the Koreans still at war? I don't remember. I think, no, they pieced out. I believe they pieced out. I think we would have saw, like, numbers popping up. Anyways, let's see what the Canadians do. Mm, yes, Kyoto will probably fall, more than likely. Uh, actually, no, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're, I think if the Canadians want to, they will definitely destroy all of Japan. And again, giving a very interesting border with the Koreans, a very, very, very interesting border with the Koreans, especially because that would be, that would be, I think a fascinating war to watch because the Canadians might be more powerful, but at the end of the day, the Koreans have a much better fleet. Uh, whereas the Canadians have a fleet, but actually it's more in the Atlantic and not so much in the Pacific. Their Pacific fleet is really weak. A lot of these units are just embarked units. So I think Korea would demolish any sort of naval naval conflict that would happen between these two powers. Uh, but if they do, if they use the XCOM squads like they way like the way they did with Japan, then they would have, I think, some moderate success. Um, but we'll see. Dang. So what is going on here? Korea is launching a sneak attack against somebody, but where would that be? Who would that be for exactly? Mexico or something? Maybe Mexico. I mean, that would be pretty cool to watch. Remember, Guadalajara is is a Pacific Coast city. They wouldn't be able to attack anything else, but uh, that's definitely a possibility. So what are you doing, Australia? Are you actually going to get in the way of Canada or or what? Maybe you're maybe you're gonna try again. Ooh, I think I just saw. Yep, an atomic bomb. So you. Oh gosh, please don't. Please, for the love of God, please don't nuke Japan. Do we? I don't need. <laughs> the comment section will go crazy if that happens. I can already. I can already tell. Um, I guess I don't think. It, I don't think it will happen unless, of course, they nuke Osaka. But that's that's it. Anything, anything that is remotely close to World War II and the comment section of these videos go crazy. And it's funny. Not crazy in a bad way. It's just, I mean, everyone's just like, oh my god. And it's uh, very entertaining to watch. <laughs> but I can just see the everyone losing their mind if Japan were to be nuked right now. Um, especially by Canada. But no, I don't think Canada's going to do it. Actually, did they? No, those are pillaged. Okay, okay. I'm just making sure I was going to say, I was going to say... They are pillaging the crap out of the Japanese mainland, though. Which is still messed up when you think about it. Because they don't even need to do that. These XCOM units are just rolling over everything Japan has. And I guess it makes sense. I mean, Japan is really behind technology, but, but still. Uh, let's go ahead and check in on Africa. Africa is much less exciting war. These two nations don't really have the units to be super powerful. Remember, they really don't have much of an air force at all, either. Both of these powers. I think that's one reason why it's not as exciting. But the Congo seemed to somewhat have the advantage here. I would say somewhat have the advantage. Let's watch what the Koreans are doing. 
nothing big yet. The Australians, I think, are making a, a very fast rush in for Osaka. The problem is that this is where the last remaining Japanese um, military regiments are, are left. Ooh, Australia is going to make this tough, actually, for the last city. I, I can't believe this was done. I mean, I think that there's almost no other scenario that we would see um, Japan lose this badly, uh, lose their homeland this badly. I think due to the fact that uh, that the Canadians are so far ahead in technology is the only reason why they're having this much success. Success. The Japanese mainland should be almost impossible to take through through lands like they are with the XCOM units because they've got obviously Mount Fuji. They've got this lake. It's very thin, shriveled, shriveled piece of land. Uh, I can see it happening through naval conquest, but that's it. And it's incredible that we're not really seeing that. It's it's I think a major part of their success is due to the fact that they are dominating the land warfare that's happening um, all around these Japanese cities. So Kyoto will fall. It seems like they're racing after Osaka first, which actually might be smart if they want to stop the Australians from maybe taking the city from them. Because Satsuma will fall, I think, no matter what, to the Canadians. Almost no doubt in my mind that they would fall to the Canadians. Australia really reinforcing the Hawaiian Islands. I wonder why that might be happening. Giant death robots moving in. For some reason, I'm to be honest, I'm thinking I'm thinking Mexico, but it, I maybe not because they'd probably be on a more direct path to Central America. Uh, it might be for Argentina, which I think for the Koreans in kind of a continental Asian power to have a foothold in. For especially the Cape of uh, Cape Horn, that would be pretty significant to have you know to kind of extend their reach because that's the one thing the Koreans really haven't done, and neither have the Canadians. Um, they haven't; they're not an outside force playing roles in different continents. Whereas France has done that; they're playing major roles even in North Africa. I'm sorry, even in North America, North Africa, um, in pretty far down deep in Africa, they have um, kind of footholds in all these different areas. So boom, no big surprise there. Kyoto has fallen. How are the Congo doing? Congo really, I think, are more focused on attacking the Ashanti military than, than attacking any other cities. There are still some pretty big cities, though, that if they were to fall to the Congo would be pretty interesting. Very, very interesting. The Australians are trying their best to reach Osaka, but I don't think they're going to make it. Uh, these diggers are, I think, pretty far behind technology when it comes to facing the XCOM units of Canada, but still, I think they're still ahead of riflemen. I'm not 100%. Uh, I'm sure they're a little bit behind because AIs hold on to their unique unit a little bit longer than, than normal, than they should, I guess I should say. Denmark's still alive, surprisingly enough. Korea hasn't done anything. They, Where are they going? There they go. I think it is for Argentina. Or I mean, they better, it better not be for Colombia because that's not going to work. There's there's no way that works. Yeah, so they're pretty much leaving Satsuma alone, uh, and they are racing for Osaka, which is actually going to be harder because there are already Australian units taking up these tiles, um, as well as Osaka's harder to take through lands. These XCOM units aren't going to have as much success. Let's, uh, I'm going to stay on, see, it sucks because every major country that's at conflict are all about the same turns uh, in the processing, in like the the way the turns are processed. They're all like one after the other. So it's Congo, then the Ashanti, then it's the Canadians. But the Canadians are big enough where their turn takes a little bit longer to process, so I should probably check on Africa. There goes the sieges of both of these cities, and actually Canada's already been locked out. So that will almost... I think it's safe to say it's almost guaranteed uh, this will go to both cities will go to Canada. Assigned delegates don't care. Embargo uh, Argentina and the banning of copper. I don't know why France of all is trying to ban luxuries. They're so massive they probably have almost all the luxuries in the world. But maybe maybe they're they maybe they're okay with that because they have all the 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 luxuries in the world. They're okay with banning certain things because they have enough happiness to do so. Mm, yeah, it's still pretty much the same. Zulu piecing out with Japan could lead to, could foreshadow a possible war. 
Um, maybe Shaka. But, geez, where is the Shaka military at? Where's Shaka's military? It's, it's almost non-existent here, at least in South Africa. Which is a big, big problem. Yeah, that's a huge problem. And let's see if the Congo actually decide to attack a city here. Again, Harar, I believe is how you pronounce that, is a city with 23 population. That's obviously really good. Um, okay, Japan declared war. I'm sorry, the Zulu declared war on Spain now. Zulu have been going to war consistently at all times, which is crazy. There we go. Now we have the race for Iberia again with Spain and the British. Um, I've been waiting for this war for a while too. Again, B-lister civs going at it, kind of. I really need to think of a better name instead of B-listers. I don't like that. But mid-range power civs kind of going at it. Uh, I wouldn't classify, I guess, Spain as a mid-range. But I definitely the UK. Definitely the UK. Let's see if the Canadians can take over Japan instantly right now. So I think that Iberian War will be enough for us to keep it up, to keep the campaign going. Uh, because Japan's going to end this conflict in the Pacific quite fast, in probably the next two turns. They won't be able to take over both these cities right now. But probably, yeah, they're definitely not going to take it in this turn. I, I don't actually, maybe, guided missile and a nuclear missile. Hey, I'm glad that Canada didn't use their nuclear missile, although it would have been a lot easier for them. Uh, still, it would have been uh, pretty messed up. Canada did it the way that the Americans in World War II uh, didn't want to do it. They didn't want to launch an assault on the Japanese mainland. Um, but Canada just by... Well, this is 2080, so completely different time. Uh, actually, both cities didn't fall. That's kind of surprising. Osaka will definitely fall, though. And more XCOM units are in place, so... Maybe still another two turns. Argentina has denounced Canada. Um, yeah, surprised by the Spanish coalition that kind of formed, somewhat formed. McDonald applying against... Who is this? Argentina. Okay. Yeah, that's not a big surprise there. Let's go to Iberia. Kind of view over this. So, uh, Churchill's smart. He has launched paratroopers. Again, we've never seen conflicts this late in the technology tree. Um, usually the AI just stops going to war at a certain point. But it's so, it's so nice to see the AI using paratroopers and using XCOM units for the case of, of uh, Canada to, to their benefit. It's, it's really, really entertaining. Um, so, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I really like watching this. It's so much fun. I don't want to make any statements about, like, excitement level and how good this series has been in terms of AI onlys as, as, like, as, as I've done it throughout the channel. I think I'll wait for the end of the campaign because I think it's still, it's still getting better. Um, but we'll, we'll see. We, we, we definitely, I will, I will definitely make my case for how, how well I thought this AI only has been. And, uh, it, it greatly depends on, you know, I don't think it's over. I think it's, I think we're still going. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting conflict here. Let's not forget about Africa. Africa is still fighting, fighting itself out. Uh, and the Congo seem to have a pretty big advantage, like I've been saying, but I think it's going to be, uh, a d pretty distinct advantage over the course of the next few turns. Bam, maybe not. I mean, they kind of retreated there. They shan't have denounced Korea. Multiple submarines uh, blockading, but they're just blockading. And boom, Canada has grabbed the third city, Osaka. Oh, no, they took over everything. They took over both. Never mind. So there we go. Uh, we now have the Canadian-Japanese mainland. Uh, what, what Japanese-Canada? Would that be the right way to put it? Turn 562. Uh, there are still two worlds, two pretty big conflicts going on. So it is definitely possible for us to see more. Here's the Korean fleet. I, I, I'm guessing Argentina. Or if they want to launch maybe a sneak attack for Sydney, that's not going to go well. That is definitely not going to go well if they try to attack Australia like that. Australia having a small force out this way too. And for some reason, the Congo... Maybe the Congo are going after... Ar Maybe a bunch of people are going after Argentina. I don't know. This actually, I think, holds a pretty distinct advantage. Because if, you if, you, if you're if you Korea, you could probably get open borders with Colombia and vice versa. But th I think this this city holds a pretty strong... Um, it's, a, it's a pretty strong hold of power. 
to be in Latin America like that. Ashanti have pieced out with Spain. Not a big deal peace deal at all. I didn't even realize that they were at war, which is sad. All right, let's see how the UK do. Santiago is already uh, under siege. Bam! Santiago has already been taken. How? That's got to be the Spitfires. Actually, the, I think the Spitfires are out of date. There's one, there's one or two left, it looks like. Uh, and now we begin the siege of... of uh, oh, now the Congo are going after Denmark. Remember, Denmark has this Moroccan city, something to keep in mind. Definitely something to keep in mind. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if they if, if the British grab Madrid here, which, I don't, I don't know, it's still going to be hard. Uh, Spain's got a lot of units, and there will be certainly a, a, a battle back and forth. They're gonna Spain's going to take back Santiago, that's for sure. But uh, if they manage to take over Madrid, I mean, this is by far, by far the most successful um I think game by any nation in the British Isles. By any nation in the British Isles. Siam declaring war in Denmark. Denmark trying to reinforce that city, but they're taking forever because they've got to maneuver through all of the uh, French units in Europe. Still Colombia staying quiet. And so is Korea. Turn, we're about to reach turn 564. And these cities are growing back their health. And there's also now a... A very, very interesting front now. Um, Santiago has been captured by Spain. We knew about that. <clears throat> now the Koreans are, are pretty much sandwiched. They, they are pretty much sandwiched here in between great powers like France and now Canada. Obviously, they can hold back Canada a little bit more. But I, I'm, I don't know. Korea's got to be freaking out. And, I mean, they don't even look that powerful, to be honest. When I scroll over their empire, look at how empty this region is. When we look over Canada, I mean, it's just... Poof, and we don't, need to, we don't even need to mention uh, France in, a, in, in that sort of scenario. Okay, so Santiago will definitely not fall again. I'm wondering how... Why, why are the British so successful here? Uh, Napoleon's plotting against the Ashanti. Okay. Just want to make sure. I don't know any of the modern Civ leaders' names at all, clearly. Uh, yeah, no, the UK are having major success, and I'm wondering if it's because of their Air Force. I think they have a much bigger Air Force than we're accounting for. Definitely. Poor Ottomans. Oh, jeez. I just saw the Ottomans process their turn. I mean, they're kind of screwed. They could go to war with the Ashanti, kind of. They have some forces here, actually. What's going on here? This war has been really stagnant. Not really anybody taking too much of either of either side. I mean, still a pretty big pickup for the Congo, picking up the the uh, capital like that. But for this to have been a significant war for the Congo, they were they they need a lot more cities than just one uh, for them to kind of be in that placement of of I don't know. They're they're out of the great power race, that's for sure. But they could start to maybe inch closer to someone like uh, Colombia or Australia, you know, they could have. Anyways, guys, I'm about to stop right there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.